so we had this we had a party that um, that was a queer dance party and we were trying to create queer space and create a space for um, people who didn't feel like they had a place in kind of a street world or like dance or like party area or social world in Providence and we had this party and it was great but at during the party um, we ended up asking some people to stop kissing on the dance floor because they seemed to be straight. And we also, ha we also passed out a zine that was about straight privilege and kissing and PDA and how, um, how people exercising this kind of straight privilege of not, being, not having to think about how their PDA looked made other people who don't have that privilege feel weird. And people got angry at us. Yeah, so right after the party, well actually, before the party we had been talking about whether to invite straight people, and we decided that we should, but we didn't really know. Um, other than making it just really gay and really queer seeming in the party itself, we didn't know exactly how to um, sort of just set the tone really differently. Sort of we wanted to create, an, an, not sort of to say that in a, in a society that we seek to create, straight people should feel uncomfortable, but we wanted to say for this one night, if the same way that queer people are often asked to check a part of their identity at the door when they come into a, an organizing space or a community space, we wanted to, to set the terms and set the feelings so that there was sort of that going on for um, straight and cisgender folks um, coming into our party. And so, you know, yeah, we asked some people to leave and there was a very heated email discussion um, with a lot of participation. Um, by a lot of people who maybe hadn't thought about the issue that carefully, um, or just hadn't thought about it that personally um, that much. Uh, and so that was our current event. Our current event was like this idea to seize upon um, uh, the political imperative to talk about privilege and how it affects our lives. Um, and we felt that it was, it was a, this kind of touchdown moment where we don't kind of have to talk about privilege a lot in our lives and we don't have to you know we're like kind of middle class white people and we kind of live kind of scuzzy artists lives but ultimately have a lot of privilege um like artist activist organizer whatever you know farmer lives um and um and then it, it's very uncomfortable when people have to talk about privilege because it often means kind of questioning things you take for granted and questioning things that you kind of think you deserve or think you ought to have and um and it and it and that as a as a kind of wider current event is about the you know the rest of the world and how we as North Americans interact with the rest of the world and so it was this interesting moment of a lot of people who usually don't have to question privilege us pushing them to look at it, uh, them pushing us to look at our privilege, and for this, we did a lot of thinking about the print, and ultimately we are kind of like, let's make this exhortation to speak about it and to have conversations about it. And, um, and I mean, it's, it's hard to read, but that was, that was somewhat on purpose, and then it's like, how do you look at this topic that's often shifting and confusing and shows you different sides of itself and it's hard to kind of get the words to fit around. Um, so the, I mean, the text, both the, like the block hand letter text and um, the, like the smaller letters are a really you know, sincere and direct invitation to ask people to, to ask these questions and to have those conversations with people they're comfortable with and with people that they aren't less comfortable with having that conversation with. Um, and to ask people to be open to the conversation when someone else brings it up with them.